This morning we uh, discussed uh, seven factors of enlightenment. Now uh, you probably might have come across in various other places in uh, texts uh, themselves 37 factors of enlightenment. Dhammas. And uh, um, they are you can find in uh, Majjhimi Nikaya, in Sangyati Nikaya, and so forth. Especially in these two Nikayas you can find. Uh, even Digha Nikaya. The 37 are four foundations of mindfulness. Four bases of accomplishments, four efforts, five spiritual faculties, and five spiritual powers, and then seven factors of enlightenment, and the Noble Eightfold Path. This makes 37. Four foundations of mindfulness falls under the enlightenment factor of mindfulness. This is just an elaboration of the first factor of enlightenment factor, mindfulness. Four bases of accomplishments and four efforts are almost identical. Four bases of accomplishments are uh, one uses uh, strong will to attain, to gain concentration and the concentration itself becomes a condition uh, for achieving a higher super normal states. <coughs> but it begins with strong will called chanda and then one uses desire which is called chitta mind which is uh, in fact uh, strong inclination for gaining jhana concentration and using that concentration as the basis one attains one gains supernatural powers. Third is effort, virya, is used as the basis for gaining concentration. And based on that concentration, one develops supernatural powers. Third is investigation. I'm sorry, fourth is investigation is used for gaining concentration. And based on that, one develops supernatural powers. Now you can uh, understand desire or will, strong will, uh, then uh, uh, effort, 
that you can use to gain concentration, but how can you use investigation to gain concentration? Investigation called, is called Vimangsa, Pali word I try to avoid because it is too complicated, too many Pali words for you to remember. A Vimangsa. That is why I say these are identical <laughs> with <laughs> Vimansa is Dhamma Vichaya actually. Dhamma Vichaya. But different word is used. First is Chanda, C H A N D A, Chanda. Second is Chitta, C I. T, T, A. Third is Viriya, V I, R I, Y A. Last is Vimangsa, V I, M A M S A. V I M A, I M long A. Then M S A long A V Mang Sa. And using these four factors, one gain concentration, and use that concentration to gain spiritual, uh, um, supernatural powers. Therefore, they are called Iddi Pada. Pada means the basis. Iddi means accomplishments. But in essence, what they do is they, one uses this as the strong uh, power to gain concentration and use the concentration. Then the other four, I, I say, you, if you look at the list, other four also are called effort, fourfold effort. But by use use different name, they are called. Uh, uh, Padhana, Samma Padhana. Padhana also means making effort. Chattaro Samma Padhana. Padhana, P A D H long A N A. Padhana. Sometimes we call it uh, Padhana Virya, the same thing, Virya V I R I Y A. Padhana is another name for it, almost re redundant, synonymous. <coughs> so there are four, as we have already repeated several times, fourfold effort effort to prevent, effort to overcome, effort to cultivate, effort to develop or maintain. Then five spiritual faculties. Spiritual faculties are faith, effort, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. And they become spiritual powers as well. <laughs> the spiritual faculties themselves become spiritual powers. Although the names are different, the things they do is the same. Then we have factors of enlightenment and the Noble Eightfold Path, as we all know. Now, we can uh, put all these spiritual faculties, spiritual uh, powers, efforts, basis, basis of accomplishments, and four foundations for mindfulness, all inside seven factors of enlightenment.
we can see the similarity between these factors and seven factors of enlightenment. In the seven factors of enlightenment, we have effort, which is divided into eight basis and effort. Both categories can fall into the enlightenment factor of effort. Then four foundations of mindfulness, all the four can fall into the category of mindfulness factor of enlightenment. So, twelve of them are taken care of. <laughs> and the remaining ten, uh, faith, faith arises when we have uh, concentration. You remember in concentration formula, internal confidence in the second jhana, then uh, second is effort, again effort repeated as mindfulness factor of enlightenment. Sati, mindfulness, falls into the mindfulness factor of enlightenment. Samadhi, concentration, fall into the factors of enlightenment. And wisdom, fall into the uh, category of uh, uh, investigation uh, or the factors of enlightenment. So, we can assimilate all the uh, 22 factors into the seven factors of enlightenment. Now, then two categories remain. To remain. Noble Eightfold Path and the seven factors of enlightenment. Other 22 are already taken care of, right? Are you with me? All 22 are in the factors of enlightenment? All taken care of, all to be put under the, in the seven factors of enlightenment category, right? Have you seen how we did that? Uh, I believe you all got it already. If there is any doubt, okay. Now seven factors of enlightenment and Noble Eightfold Path stand out as two remaining categories. Now Eightfold Path, understanding, thinking, speech, action, livelihood, effort, mindfulness and concentration. Now, I wanted to write them down in a piece of paper or put it on the board so that you can have a visual image, but I didn't have time to do that. Perhaps at the end of the, this couple of days I can do that so that you can see all of them on the paper so you can easily relay, you know, with your eyes you can connect them. Now, just imagine number one is understanding, right understanding. Right understanding we can put easily into uh, investigation, because when we investigate, what we do, we understand. Then we have uh, speech, action, and livelihood. Right thought are thought of renunciation, thought of friendliness, thought of compassion. These three we can put under also under the category of investigation because when we investigate, we investigate the thought, uh, we investigate the right thought, wrong thought, right uh, uh, intention, wrong intention, and uh, thought of uh, friendliness, thought of compassion, thought of uh, uh, generosity, renunciation, neck karma. We investigate all, all come under the category of investigation. 
then remains speech, action and livelihood. Honestly speaking, without these three factors, we cannot cultivate factors of enlightenment. And therefore, they are automatically included in the practice of enlightenment factors, seven factors of enlightenment. Then remains only effort, mindfulness and concentration. They all are already in the factors of enlightenment. Right speech, right action, and right mindfulness fit into the, uh, the right the effort of the seven factors of enlightenment because it takes required effort to practice. That, that's what we practice when we practice right effort, giving up wrong speech, cultivating right speech, giving up wrong action, cultivating right action. Yeah, right, uh, uh, since we have right effort, mindfulness and concentration has three factors of the seven factors of enlightenment, they are already there. What is not there are speech, action and livelihood. No, but that falls under the right effort. The effort that is I huh? Wouldn't those three fall under effort, under the fourfold effort, mm -hmm. which covers either uh, speech, action and livelihood? But when you're making efforts, that's what you're making the effort to do, abandon wrong speech, wrong action. Right. You can fit into anything. Where do they fall? Eh? Where do you slava? Or where do they fall? I think uh, uh, that also makes sense. We can put there, wherever you like to put them. <laughs> I, I, I don't quarrel with them, <laughs> so long as we incorporate all of them into them. <laughs> I have no ownership of that. <laughs> so, all we have to do is to incorporate all the seven, eight no, noble eightfold path into the seven factors of enlightenment. So, we can condense everything into seven factors of enlightenment, <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> and that is why they are called enlightenment factors. The noble eightfold path is also we put, I mean, also can put into the factors of enlightenment. Buddha himself used these terms in Mahaparinibbana Sutta. Uh, Mahaparinibbana Sutta, of course, is a, a collection of various things and it's a history. Uh, various parts of the Buddha's sayings are put there and made a little history. Uh, therefore, it is not a direct uh, discourse. But others in Madhyaminikaya, are direct uh, Buddha's own discourses. Anyway, uh, so we can see um, we don't have to, you know, worry about this, uh, why this category, why that category and so forth, so long as we can put all of them together. <laughs> so our work will be easy. Now, uh, the way to practice also is given by the Buddha in uh, Sanyutta Nikaya. That means uh, we put them in a, like a scale. You no know, scale has uh, not these bathroom scales that you stand on, but the ancient scale that has a needle in the center and two baskets on both sides hanging on a on a little bar. So, center is the needle, bar is going this way with the basket. When you put something here, needle goes this way. When you put something there more, it goes this way. So, you got to keep the needle straight. To keep the needle straight, you put three here, three there, and the other remains in the center. That is how you divide seven. What is in the center? Eh? Mindfulness. 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 Okay, this side we have uh, joy, effort, and investigation. On the other side we have uh, uh, tranquility, concentration, and equanimity. Tranquility, concentration, and equanimity are passive. Joy, 
effort, investigation are active. Now, when the mind is sluggish, which of these we must cultivate? Yes, effort, investigation, or mindfulness. We, have, we cultivate. When the mind is agitated, excited, what should we cultivate? Tranquility, concentration, and equanimity. Mindfulness is the one that is uh, watching that way, this way, both sides. Mindfulness? Mindfulness is what you use as it goes too far. Exactly, mindfulness. mindfulness. Right. Mindfully, mindfulness tells uh, uh, a sluggish side, sl uh, don't cultivate uh, concentration, uh, equanimity, or tranquility. Go to the other side, bring some, you know, power from there, there. And when there is too much activity on one side, mindfulness tells them that side to go to the other side, bring some to the other side. So, Buddha gave a very beautiful uh, simile also. When you want to light fire, uh, normally you don't uh, uh, use uh, uh, wet cloth or wet uh, leaf, you use uh, dry cloth or dry leaf or dry stick. Similarly, when the mind is sluggish, you don't make it too sluggish by cultivating passive factors. When mind is active, you don't cultivate very energetic factors so that uh, uh, the active side becomes too active agitated. So mindfulness always keep them in balance. There, are, there is <coughs> something I want to say which um, sometimes may uh, sound like controversial, but still I want to say that. <coughs> uh, Sometimes uh, uh, our traditional uh, Buddhist e uh, may even not like it, but I must say that. We have three Bodhjangas, Mahakasapa Bodhjanga, Mahamoggallana Bodhjanga, and Chuddha Bodhjanga. Mahakasapa Bodhjanga, when uh, Venerable Kassapa, Maha Kassapa, Maha Kassapa is not an ordinary monk. He was second only to the Buddha. He was an enlightened monk, practicing all severe austere, 13 austere practices called Dutangas, living in forest. His entire life was devoted, dedicated to practice meditation and mindfulness. Mahamoggallana was also an Arhant. And he has so much supernatural powers that even when he, when the thieves came to kill him, it is said that he was in a cave. The, the murderers came once they watched Venerable Moggallana going into the cave. As soon as he went in, these murderers rushed into the cave to club him and kill him. But when they went in, he disappeared. Second, third, fourth time they tried, seven, six times they tried. Each time he disappeared. There was only one entrance to the cave and they blocked the cave to stop to catch, catch him each time he disappeared because he has such a supernatural he practiced this 
seven factors of enlightenment, four foundations of mindfulness, everything. And finally, Mongalana thought, gee, why do these people come after me? I have not done no wrong to them, never offended them. Why do they come? Then he saw his own previous bad karma, that he had killed his mother and father in one of his previous lives. So now, even after attainment of enlightenment, the residual karma followed him, karmic results, so he cannot escape. So he said, okay, after all this body is not mine, do whatever you want. They came and, came and clubbed him, broke him, his bones into pieces and make it, made it like a bag of grains and left. Moggallana was so powerful in his supernatural attainments that he put all of them together, <laughs> those bro broken pieces together, went and saw the Buddha, took his leave and passed away. Now, when these two fell ill, it is said that Buddha went and recited factors of enlightenment. Monks who had attained enlightenment are supposed to have mindfulness all the time. You know, I mentioned this morning, when, you, when mindfulness factor of enlightenment is perfect, it is always there. It is impeccable. You will never lose it. No, nothing can invade it. Nothing can, nothing can weaken it. It always remains intact, very powerful. When you fall sick, you just use mindfulness. You can get rid of it. Come out very easy, healthy. Why did the Buddha ha uh, have to go and recite Bojangas? Worse than that is the Buddha himself fell sick. And then it is said Mahachunda went and recited the sutras to Buddha. It was the Buddha who promulgated, explained, expound, discovered and taught the world the benefit of the practice of seven factors of enlightenment. Didn't he remember them when he was sick? Had Buddha forgotten all of them? Was he confused for somebody to come and recite sutras to Buddha? This is the question. In, in Sanyutta Nikaya, in uh, uh, Satipatthana Sanyutta, there is an incident where Buddha once fell ill and he was so mindful Venerable Ananda, when Buddha fell ill, Venerable Ananda thought, this is it. This is his last illness. He will never recover. He will pass away. Next day, Ananda was shocked to see Buddha shining, coming out of this illness. Seeing that Venerable Ananda was so delighted, he went to the Buddha and said, Sir, I was so confused when you were sick. I I, I felt the whole world fell apart. Everything was confused. I didn't understand anything, any dhamma. Because I thought you are going to pass away. I am so glad that you are, you are recovered. I am so pleased. He expressed his gratification seeing the Buddha recovered from his illness. Then why didn't he use the same mindfulness to recover from his sickness when he fell ill. Why, didn't, why did he want Chunda to come and recite the sutras? This is, this is my belief, is an interpolation of the redactors. The people, monks, who compose 
So I put all the dhammas together in 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 um, as sutras and classified them in order to show the power of seven factors of enlightenment. They f when they when they wanted to show the power of factors of enlightenment, they forgot the Buddha's power. They forgot the Buddha's attainment of enlightenment. They forgot the Buddha's. It was the Buddha who introduced them. And they completely forgot the Buddha's supreme enlightened state, completely forgot that the Buddha was able to be mindful all the time. Whenever he was sick, he was able to recover from his sickness by using his mindfulness. They have forgotten all this because they, don't, they wanted to glorify the factors of enlightenment. And Buddha said, one who sees me, sees the Dhamma, one who sees the Dhamma, sees me. That's what he, he told Vakali. He told Vakali, Vakali see the Dhamma. When you see the Dhamma, I am there. So, Buddha and Dhamma were not different. Because whatever Buddha taught, he practiced. He he, these factors of enlightenment, Buddha taught the world from his own practice, from his own experience, from his own realization, from his own attainment of enlightenment, and from his own inner wisdom, he taught these things. And it was not difficult for the Buddha just to use them whenever he falls sick, fell sick. Not only that, in Madhyamika there is a discourse where Buddha said. He said to Venerable Ananda, Ananda, if uh, I don't remember the number of monks, four or eight or certain number of monks sit around me and ask questions on the four foundations of mindfulness, even simultaneously, all 24 hours, more this morning, from this morning till next morning. If they ask me questions, I will answer all of them. Then he was, Buddha was 80 years old. He said, even I am, although I am 80 years old now, still I am, my mindfulness is so powerful that then I can answer any question anybody asks from morning, one morning till next morning, without getting tired without losing the track of mindfulness. That was the Buddha. And therefore, this, uh, when you read these uh, three Bodhjangas, uh, Bodhjanga Sutras, not the Bodhjangas themselves, Bodhjanga Sutras that were presided to Mahakasapa, Mahamoggallana, and above all, to the Buddha. You can see, this is a very devotional uh, composition by very pious religious monks to show the power of seven factors of enlightenment. When, we, when they tried to show the power of seven factors of enlightenment, they totally forgot about the power of the Buddha and the power of enlightened person. Both Mahakasapa Mahamoggallana were fully enlightened persons and Buddha was even greater than that and therefore one who practices developed the factors of enlightenment, Buddha said that person is totally free from all kind of uh, mental suffering. For physical aches and pains, you can take medication. That is different. But these factors, this recital of sutras, we recite to recover from mental states. If somebody suffers from mental states, from sickness, because when people are sick, they are depressed. In order to recover from that depression, we chant sutras. Buddha had never been depressed. 
Anand, Venerable uh, Moggalla and uh, uh, Mahakasapa also were not depressed. And therefore, uh, factors of enlightenment are extremely powerful. Only when one practices them, that person definitely can attain full enlightenment and maintain mindfulness without any uh, problem, without letting anything invade their mind. In the sutta, in uh, you know what I said so far about this Mahakasapa, Mahamuggala, and the Buddha is my own feeling that uh, uh, this would uh, uh, be an insult to say that somebody came and recited these things to the Buddha is an insult to the Buddha. <laughs> so that is my impression. Because my belief of Buddha is much greater than that. My belief in the Buddha is that he is supremely enlightened. He is able to recover from any sickness by just staying mindful, staying using the factors of enlightenment that he himself practiced, attained, liberated himself from all psychic irritants and not Thing could affect his mind. Akuppa me cheto imutti. When he attained enlightenment, he said, Akuppa me cheto imutti. My liberation is undistorted. It is not altered state of consciousness. Akuppa me cheto imutti. My liberation is not an altered state of consciousness. My liberation is a pure perfect, real liberation. One who had that liberation has no sickness of sankara, sankara dukkha, chetasika dukkha. Chetasika dukkha is a suffering, mental suffering. Such a person does not have mental suffering. No sankara dukkha, no uparinama dukkha. Uh, aches and pains they can easily overcome aches and pains by just using pure perfect mindfulness wisdom understanding investigation purity they can easily get rid of you know when Buddha was suffering from uh, diarrhea in his last uh, stage what kind of medicine did he take? No medicine. Venerable Ananda was watching him, following him for seven days. He was having diarrhea and dehydration. Buddha suffered from dehydration because of diarrhea. He did not take any medicine. Even water was given to the Buddha was just from a river, dirty river, where he was suffering from diarrhea. You know, at that time, uh, water from a dirty river would aggravate it. But still, he did not take any medicine. And he said, Ananda, prepare my bed. I am weak. He prepared the bed. He laid down and remained very mindful, very peaceful, calm. And when Chunda came, Subhadda came to uh, ask question. Venerable Ananda thought Buddha was very tired and said, Subhadda, no, no, don't disturb the Buddha. Buddha said, Ananda, let him come. He may have questions. He will not have any, any other chance to ask the questions. Let him come. I am capable of answering questions. Even at that time, he was so alert, so mindful, so strong. He was just about to breathe his last breath. <laughs> Even at that time, when Subhadda came, Buddha said, let him come. And he answered his question. And then another monk came and said, sir, Dhamma Rama is sitting under a tree, whereas all other monks uh, 
uh, mourn and lament and cry uh, over the thought that Buddha is going to pass away. Now thus, Dhammarama doesn't seem to have any concern about the Buddha's passing away. He is sitting and meditating. Buddha said, that is my son. That is my son. He is not actually his son, but uh, in, in order to appreciate what he was doing, he called, this is my son, one who inherits my property, my enlightenment. He inherits. He wants to have the share of enlightenment before I pass away. That is very good. Let him do that. <laughs> she was so always so alert, so mindful, so calm, so peaceful. No sickness affected him. And therefore, Venerable Chunda doesn't have to go and chant Bojangas to the Buddha. And these three sutras are comp have been composed by very religious, pious, devotional people to show the power of Bojangas. Bojanga does not have any power by reciting. Bojanga's power is the is in the practice. Mindfulness, you can you can recite mindfulness factor of enlightenment million times, you will never get one iota of mindfulness. You can recite the enlightened fact all the enlightened factors of enlightenment, 37 factors of enlightenment trillion times, you never get one iota of insight, enlightenment, mindfulness, never. Only when we practice, Buddha always emphasized you practice and practice and practice, then only you will get the benefit of these factors of enlightenment. So, uh, then Buddha said that there are 14 factors of enlightenment. Out of these seven, seven becomes 14. In the discourse, everywhere we see iti ajyattangva dhammesu dhamma anupasi viherati, bahiddhava dhammesu dhamma anupasi viherati. Be mindful of the mental, the, the dhamma, be mindful of uh, the phenomena, dhamma is a phenomena, internally and be mindful of the dhammas or phenomena externally. Now how can you be mindful of internal factors of enlightenment and external factors of enlightenment? The same way we become mindful of other factors. Earlier we said about the body, feeling, uh, consciousness and so forth. Same way when I cultivate mindfulness factor of enlightenment, I become mindful all the time 24 hours until it becomes a factor of enlightenment. When you practice mindfulness, I know, definitely I know, when you practice mindfulness and remain mindful 24 hours, your mindfulness factor of enlightenment becomes perfect, the same way that it became perfect in me. And therefore, I know it will work for you exactly as it works for me. That way, all the factors of enlightenment, seven factors of enlightenment that you practice, I become aware of it. I compare my attainment with yours and know there is no difference between your attainment and my attainment. This way, it seven becomes fourteen. I think, friends, uh, I must conclude this for now.